Good morning. So, we start the service with a gathering song. Today is Randy's gathering song. He sings a verse and then we sing the chorus. And what we often like to do is like put our hands out during the chorus to shed our love and focus our love on various people in the room or not in the room, <laughs> as you will. So Randy, if you would lead us, please. Not that you can't hear me. Okay. <laughs> Two verses and then a chorus and then I don't know how that goes after that. Okay. <laughs> Here's to the babies in a brand new world. Here's to the beauty in the stars. Here's to the travelers on the open road. Here's to the dreamers in the bars. Here's to the teachers in the crowded rooms. Here's to the workers in the fields. Here's to the preachers of the sacred word. And here's to the drivers at the wheel. Here's to you, my love, with blessings from above, let the day begin. Here's to you, my love, with blessings from above, let the day begin. Here's to the doctors in their healing work, and here's to the loved ones in their care. Here's to the strangers on the street tonight. And here's to the lonely everywhere. Here's to you, my love. With blessings from above, let the day begin. Here's to you, my love. With blessings from above, let the day begin. Here's to the wisdom from the mouths of babes. Here's to the lions in the cage. Here's to the struggles of the silent war. Here's to the closing of the age. Here's to you, my love. With blessings from above, let the day begin. Here's to you, my love. With blessings from above, let the day begin. Here's to you, my love. With blessings from above, let the day begin. Let the day star. Thank you so much, Randy. Thank you all. You can sit, be comfortable. I am Reverend Susan Dorn. I get to be a lot of things today. <laughs> Speaker, lighter of the candle, all sorts of stuff. This is Randy Burns, our musician, who is, I think, pretty fabulous. And today, yay, today we will let the day begin. I don't know of any announcements, Tom. Is there anything I'm supposed to know? Well, uh, second and fourth, we have, uh, what do we call it, Oh, yeah. Okay, which is just kind of a getting together of everybody downstairs with a chance to uh, visit a little bit, get to know each other a little better on the second and fourth on the uh, Sundays. On the third Sunday, we started a uh, Course in Miracles class. Um, Pam is, is leading that. We meet once a month after, after church at 12.30. Uh, 12.30. Um, but I don't know that we have anything beyond, beyond that. Okay. I have a request from Stacy Lynn. Ray. Ray. I wrote it wrong. Stacy Ray. If anyone can give her a ride to Chinook Winds after the service today, she would really appreciate it so she can get to work on time. So Stacy Ray or Ray, if you prefer. If you have that possibility within you, see her after the service. All right. I've never got to do this part. This is the lighting of the Christ candle. The Christ candle is a physical representation, oh, good for me, of um, that Christ light that shines within each one of us. 
and during the service or at any time if your mind's wandering or whatever you can focus on this recognizing that light that shines out here is that same light that shines in each one of us every day in every way and I give thanks for that so we're going to open with a prayer and if you want to close your eyes I invite you to do that and take in a really deep breath filling your whole body with that light that we call Christ, that we call good and very good. And I know for each one of us here today that we are called to be witnesses to each other, to the love within that has no opposite. And as we travel our path on this life journey, we are brought here by divine appointment. And each one of us has the opportunity to share, to experience, to be the presence of life, that life and light that we are. And somehow between the fellowship and the music and the words and the prayer, we are served so that we can continue to serve out in our world. For all of this, I give true and grateful thanks, and just let it be, and say amen. Amen. I've never been my own um, pulpit assistant, so I'm, I'm having to look through this. Let's see. Oh, monthly, no, prayer box, sorry, first. This is the prayer box, and there are, you are welcome to fill out these little cards, which there's some back there, there's some up here. Um, you can put them in envelopes also if you want to do an offering, there are offering envelopes about. But these prayers are stored in this box, and I believe people in the church are praying for them each and every day. And at the end of the month, they send them to um, Global Unity, and they pray for these requests for a month. So your prayers continue to be heard, continue to be open for your reception of their good and their love and their blessings. So please, and I, this must be, sometime this week they will actually be sent to unity. Now, in your bulletin, you have a daily, nope, you don't, you have a, a monthly affirmation. It's in the orange part of your bulletin. And it's up there. Oh no, song first. Oops. I'm sorry. My, my bad. I just skipped right over that. Go figure. So instead of doing what I just said, we have a congregational song. <laughs> I'm going to go over to Randy now. Like I said, being your own pulpit assistant is not the easiest thing in the world. Um, You've probably never heard it, and that's okay. A very good friend of mine wrote it like 15 years ago. And it's pretty simple, and we're going to do it with sort of a gospel feel. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'll sing it loud so you can follow for a lot. <laughs>
Good job, all of you. Now we get to do things like the monthly affirmation. So if you would read with me, please, the first one. The heart of unity by the sea is a sanctuary of love and peace. And the second one, my heart is a sanctuary of love and peace. And our beloved friend Theodora is going to read our daily word. You can come up or you can do it from there. It's your choice. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. As I forgive, I know the fullness of divine love. God's love flows freely to all who will receive it. Only as I forgive, however, can I fully experience God's love. Unity co-founder Myrtle Fillmore wrote, Forgiveness is the art of putting something else in place of the thing forgiven. That something else is the positive realization of the truth of being. When I discover a thought arising about myself, or a person or incident I have resented, I need not condone what was done or left undone. I need only release the thought and focus on the eternal truth, that every person is the image and likeness of God regardless of what they may have done or failed to do. Even if my feelings are slow to respond, my act of forgiveness is complete. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Matthew 6.12. Thank you. And now we get special music from Randy. Forgive, forgive. That's to give ahead of time. When you're really feeling small When tears are in your eyes I'll dry them all I'm on your side When the times get rough And friends just can't be found like a bridge over troubled water I will lay me down Like a bridge over troubled water I will lay me down When you're down and out When you're on the street When the evening falls so hard I will comfort you I'll take your part When the darkness comes the pain is all around like a bridge over troubled water I will lay me down like a bridge over troubled water I will lay me down Sail on 
on, silver girl, sail on by. Your time has come to shine. And all your dreams are on their way. See how they shine. If you need a friend, I'm sailing right behind like a bridge over, over troubled water. I will ease your mind like a bridge over troubled water. the songwriter. Today I'm not sure if I'm liking Randy or hating him. <laughs> I don't know about you, but music just opens my heart. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for easing my heart. And I reserve the right to pick up my Kleenex throughout the talk. <laughs> I was sharing with Randy before the service that I've had sort of a rough month. I'm not going to tell you about it. It just, it was. It just was what it was. And part of that um, will end up in the talk today because so I submit the talk title, you know, a month before the talk. And then life happens. <laughs> and my usual, you know, take on my talk is that, okay, I start having ideas and finding quotes. and Okay, so I found a few quotes. And then this last Tuesday I said, okay, God, what does from the heart even mean? I said it out loud in my car as I was about to take a 40-minute drive to a prayer circle on 205. And so in the 40 minutes it took me to make that drive, I talked out loud. And today is the shortened version. <laughs> Hopefully. Because um, like, what does it mean? What does it mean from the heart? Isn't everything done from the heart? No, no, actually, that was my realization. A lot of what we do and say in everyday world comes from our mind. And I discovered in that, that time of that drive and really looking back at my life, and maybe you will experience this as well, a lot of the decisions I make, especially on a daily, instantaneous basis, are based on things that happened to me years ago and that my mind says, ah, this worked before, it'll work again. Our mind is our protector. It stores millions and millions and millions of little things from our past. And when things come up that are similar, those, those those brain things just fire on them and say, here, here's what you do. Well, you know, it may have worked when I was five. It may have worked when I was 20. But I'm older now, and maybe it doesn't work anymore. But I still make those same decisions from my brain, and sometimes from my body. My body, for example, my body remembers that when I was 23, on a Sunday, I was asked, hey, you want to go climb Saddle Mountain? Now, I have never been athletic. I've never been skinny. But I said, sure. I've never climbed anything in my life. I'm sure tennis shoes will be OK. And I didn't go all the way to the top, but I got up to one of the higher peaks. And it's like, OK, this was cool. 
Now I will tell you for sure right now, if someone said, Susan, you're 63 years old, want to go climb Saddle Mountain? The memory that I just expressed would come up like, yeah, that was a great experience. Susan, you are 63 years old. Your knees don't work that way anymore. So my brain, though, tried to say yes. When my heart said, honey, not this time. Go walk in a park. So, as much as I trust my brain, and I do, I do trust my brain, sometimes it's more of a caretaker than I need. And sometimes that auto response is not right for the situation that comes up. I mean, have you ever found yourself saying yes to something when your heart says, oh, no? But you say yes anyway, because you've always done it before. Or vice versa. Someone comes up with this idea and you go, no, I've never experienced that type of thing happening. So you say no and miss a possibility because your heart's going, uh, hello, you have a heart here. Sometimes the brain's just wrong. It's just wrong. So here's this great talk title, From the Heart. And so how do we open our heart to let those ideas come from us on a different level, in a different way? How do we open ourselves to the newness of our spirituality, our life expectancy, our partners, our lack of partners. How do we listen to our hearts? There's a writer in San Francisco, she writes for one of the newspapers up there, Janice Williams, and she writes, an open heart is a heart that feels comfortable saying, let's try, we'll find a way, let's learn something new. An open heart is a heart that's not afraid, it knows how to endure sadness. It knows how to heal and how to forgive. It is strong and loving. An open heart is, is not exclusively feminine or masculine. At its most basic, an open heart is a heart that is not afraid to love deeply. It is not blind to cost or reason or practicality, but it's not necessarily governed by those factors either. An open heart sees possibility, has vision, is patient, and is wise. An open heart is wise on its own. Our hearts, or if you watch NCIS, Leroy Jethro Gibbs says our guts open us up to new adventures to healing past error beliefs and mental blocks, opens us up to greater love, incoming and outgoing, opening us up to receive. And so yes, yeah, so, yeah, it's easy to say yeah. Easy to say, honey, and how do you do that? Okay, well, think about it. We have lots of years behind us, lots of years of experiences and good stuff, bad stuff, horrible stuff, guilty stuff, fabulous stuff. All of these years behind us, sadness, poor decisions, decisions that we made that were good decisions that turned out weird. I certainly have had those. You know, and our mind and our body, they remember these things. They do not forget. And sometimes they close off our hearts to say, oh, you don't want to go there again. And I can tell you that in this short talk, you know, I'm, we're not going to solve all of our issues. But there are tools. There are tools we can use to look at our past behaviors and say, oh, I don't need that one anymore. That worked then but I'm different today. I'm in a different space. I'm in different financial, different relationships, different work, different, 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 different. 
So thank you, my beloved mind and body. Let's see what the heart has to say. So like I did in the car when I couldn't figure out what the talk title was all about, here's the first thing I suggest you do. When you come up with the situation that says, oh yeah, we've done that before and let's do it this way, try saying the word stop out loud. And then say, and however you want to say this, I use the word God, but you can use spiritual expressions or love or whatever. Say out loud, okay God, you brought me to this decision. You brought me to this place of choice. What am I supposed to do? And you could be more loving than that. But sometimes being really frank with ourselves is like, now what? Okay, I've done it this way. I've done it that way. Nothing worked. Outside help, please. Inside help, please. Why don't I try something different? Can I step out into newness? So this is, most, this is the most exciting part of the talk for me. I watched this YouTube video. And the premise is sad and yet joyful. It was about these puppies who had been born in captivity and had lived their first three, four years in a metal box, with metal bottom and a cage at some facility. And all it said in the YouTube video when I read deeper was that no, no puppies were hurt. No puppies were hurt. But they'd been living on, on a metal floor all their lives. And finally, these puppies were being released out into a field of grass. And I watched this video many times because I wanted to be sure what I was seeing, I, that I wasn't just projecting what I wanted to see. So here's this puppy in a you know, good size case, flat metal bottom. Someone opens the cage. It's set down on the grass, opens the cage. And the look on the face of the puppy was sort of like, OK, now what? Who's going to come pick me up now? OK, I'm, I'm adding voice to their faces. But it was like, it didn't move. And then seconds go by. It's like, well, no one's coming to pick me up. Cage is open. Wonder what's out there. And the face was solemn. It was not a happy face. It was sort of run down. So the first paw goes out onto the grass, and the whole body kind of flicked up. Like, what, what is this? By the time the second paw went out, it was like, this is cool. His whole little face went, wow. And then he jumped out of the cage and ran all over the grass. And this happened with two others as well. Their faces literally changed. No one interfered with them. They got to make the choice on their own. But the difference between the inside of the case and outside was tremendous. And that's what it's like when we flow from our heart. We try new things. And you know what? Some of them are going to fail. Sometimes you're going to step out of that box and it's not going to be metal anymore. It's going to be hot concrete. But then at least you can go back, OK, this one's cooler. That was hot. This is cold. It was phenomenal. So how do we do that? How do we heal our fears or heal our sameness so we can step out of our own boxes, step out of our own cages, and feel the freedom of an open heart. How do we choose to live from the heart? From A Daily Word, I don't think it's today's, what I read was God, God's love flows freely to all who will receive it. Only as I forgive, however, can I fully experience God's love. 
When I discover a thought arising about myself or a person or an incident that I have resentment for, I just need to not judge them anymore. I need to let them go. I need to forgive them and more importantly forgive myself for judging them, even though they may have done hateful, cruel things. It's turning that into saying, that's on them. That's on them. I can choose differently today. So living from an open heart, it's not mushy. <laughs> it's not necessarily overly emotional, though I am today, but you know, it doesn't have to be that way. Living from the heart is about healing the old pathways, healing old mental blocks, mental healing things that just don't serve us today. The whole world has changed. What we did back when we were five or six years old, the world is different. We were different. We were soaking up all the energy around us from our parents and grandparents and neighborhood kids and, and some of those were loving, totally perfect environments. Some of them were not. But we've come this far and we're here today so there's something inside of us saying, oh, there's good in this world and I ought to have it. There is love in this world and I ought to have it. I ought to give it. So how do we do it? How do we stop it? How do we stop the behavior? Well, I'm going to give you some possibilities, but I want to tell you, it's not so easy, and yet it is, it is simple. It's one of those things that, you know, spirit gives us. It's like, yeah, you can, you can change your thinking, change your life. Yeah, but you've really got to change your thinking to change your life. Just a second. I've done two, I've done, I'm not reading it all from the versions I've written because everything changed on the drive down today. I saw this rainbow in the sky. I was like, that's gorgeous. And my face lit up just like that puppies. Just like that, the change happens. I was no longer sad or worried or what am I gonna say? It was like, God's speaking to me. Spirit is speaking to me. This is a good day. This is a brilliant day. So how we heal those hurts and mental blocks is by allowing ourselves to dig deeper. And sometimes that's painful and it brings up tears, anger, and frustration. And I'm gonna say this now, you don't have to do it alone. If you have a partner that you trust completely who won't overrule your feelings, use them. Use the ministers that are here. You can call me and say, hey, can you take me through this? And I will respond as well as I can. So what you do, you start practicing mindfulness about yourself and whatever situation you're in. Without judgment, without ridicule, without going okay you can do that once and then you have to get over it it's like so and I'm going to use an, a, a, an experience of a friend of mine who I've used before in this at this very pulpit when she was five it was Easter Sunday she had a really pretty new dress on so she was five her sister was younger her brother was older they were running late She's all happy, she's skipping down the path and she falls in a mud puddle. Her dress is a mess, she's a mess, and her mother yells at her. They're already running late. Now we have to wash you and find something else for you to wear. You can't wear your pretty new dress anymore. My friend is now 67. And she's still digging down to that old memory from when she's five. And I'll tell you right now, she never buys herself pretty clothes. Never. They're functional. It's okay if they get dirty. She is always late. Always. <laughs> always. If she's going to the theater, she barely makes it to the seat in time for the curtain to rise. 
Now she's healed many parts of all of this. She's done healing work around her mom. She understands that her mom had more on her mind than just her and her dress. It was like, now the whole family is going to be later. Now I have to find a new dress for you to wear, blah, blah, blah. And so she's forgiven her mom. She's forgiven herself for not liking her mom for a little while. So there's some deep forgiveness that's happened there. So when we dig down into our own stuff, there are things that will come easily to go, oh yeah, I can understand the situation now that I'm considerably older. I understand it differently. Or even if you don't, you can say, you know what? Mom's anger was on her. I didn't mean to fall in the mud. It wasn't my plan. I was happy. So you don't have to take your mom's anger on yourself. Let your mom have her own anger and just let it be. Now, she hasn't forgiven herself on the dress. I'm making the dress dirty. She's still working. We're all still working. So when you find those things, mental blocks, I love that, a mental block. You know, your mind says, oh, this is what happens, so you have to stop now. It's like, no, 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 no. This is a mental block. I can fix it. I can chip away at its corners and I can let it go. I can release it. I can make it little instead of big. So observe your feelings when you come up with that type of thing. Forgive, 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 forgive. First, forgive yourself which is sometimes the hardest. Forgive yourself. Because whatever age you were, you're not that anymore. You're different. You're different today. You're different today. I have this great quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. And since I'm not reading from my pages, I have to find it. And I love this. Ralph Waldo Emerson says, write on your heart that every day is the best day in the year. He is rich who owns the day and no one owns the day who allows it to be invaded with fret and anxiety. Finish every day and be done with it. You've done what you could. Some blunders and absurdities no doubt crept in. Forget them as soon as you can. Tomorrow is a new day. Begin it well and serenely with too high a spirit to be encumbered with your old nonsense. This new day is too dear with its hopes and invitations to waste another moment on the yesterdays. Live each day as a new day. Let go of the bloopers. Let go. Unless they served you. And then even think about that. How did it serve me? Oh, it made me laugh. OK. I don't need to do the blooper again, but I can remember to laugh. I can remember to make, I can't remember what the, the terminology is, so I'm going to let it go. Um, <laughs> Let go of trials and tribulations. Stop. I mean, literally, shout out in your car, usually when you're alone, and you find one of those things bubbling up in your head, say, stop. Stop that brain. My heart knows better. My heart knows how to love. My heart knows how to love me. My heart knows how to live in the flow of love. So brain, I love you. I love you, don't go away, but let that memory cease. Pull that plug, let that go. You know, Ricky Byers sings, I'm even gonna try to sing it. I release and I let go, I let spirit run my life, and my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. I have faith to see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. My heart is only here for good, 
for my good, for your good, for the good of the planet. Let go of the past. And I'm not telling you it's easy. It's a struggle, or can be. But as long as you take the step, that's all that matters. So in this whole process, of going back into your mind and into your childhood, there's a process, it's like you take that one thing that's happening today and you go, so how does this make me feel? Does it make me feel small or stupid or not enough? Does it make me feel angry? Does it make me feel poor? What, what one or two word emotion is this making me feel? And when you figure out what that is, go, okay, Find a quiet place and a bunch of paper <laughs> or even something to record yourself on and go back and try to find the very first thing that brought up that emotion. The very first thing. And it may be last week. You might not have ever recognized it before something that happened to you last week. It may be when you're five or 20, or any number. And then once you find it, don't judge it, just go, okay, just hold it. What was happening? Who was around me? What was I wearing? Was I in a house? Was I outside? And describe it, let your brain describe it as best it can without the emotion. Was it an argument? Were you dirty? Did you fall in the mud? Did you lose something? and describe it as best you can with all of your senses. You write that down or say it out loud so that you have a picture of the event. A picture of the event. And then think about what what you do today that resembles that whole entity that you just described. How has that played a moment in your life from then till now. You know, my friend, one of the pictures it paints for her is she doesn't buy pretty clothes for herself. That's how, it, that's how it shows up today when she's 67. There may be other things. There may be bigger things, littler things. How does it show up in my life today? And then flip it. What's the truth of who I am? For if, I were, if I were my friend, I might say, I am deserving of beauty. I deserve to be filled with beauty. My clothing, my yard, my home, I deserve to live in beauty. And then, thank you giving thanks, gratitude, thank you God, thank you Spirit for awakening this idea in me. And then place that idea firmly in your heart. And you've already placed a lot of it in your brain now. It's like your brain has a new function. Oh look, you had that idea and that didn't work for you back then. You have a new idea now. I can live in beauty. I can live in abundance. I can live in loving relationships, giving and receiving. And then what you do with that sentence, I kid you not. 70 times a day by seven days, you say it over and over and over and over again. The spiritual teacher that taught me this, this thing in the class, we all got counters so that we could just say, I believe that I'm beautiful and capable of having beautiful things. 70 times a day. For seven days. If at the end of that you haven't changed your pattern, we'll do it another seven days. There's no rule here. It's the reprogramming of your mind and heart to be one in the bigger truth of who you are so that love can flow. Your heart can open. Your whole body can express differently. And be grateful. Even if it doesn't look like it shows up right away, 
be grateful. Say thank you anyway. Say thank you to everybody. Even if they do something stupid. Thank you for letting me see that. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay. Even if they say like a, a cruel thing. Well, thank you. Because it gives you something to look at. And from what the Seattle writer said, now you can just let it go. Let it go. That was their stuff. Your stuff is... I am beautiful and capable, capable of being the best me I can. I love myself just the way I am. Just the way I am now. And tomorrow you can love yourself differently. There's no stopping love flowing from you or love flowing to you. I have no idea where I am in the talk, so I think I'm going to start closing here. You, um, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your love that brought you here today. And it's a pleasure to be a part of your life, a part of the life of this church, because I believe in this church. I believe in the love and peace that surrounds this place and how love flows in and through this very building to willing to do the, the work of spirit in so many different ways. I'm just starting to see, was it, did I have a better ending? No, I didn't. So, <laughs> and it's okay, because now we're gonna go inside, do a little meditation. And if you're willing to um, close your eyes, or if not close your eyes, at least look down at the ground, just you know, so that your, your eyes are unfocused. Your eyes are not looking at any one thing, but seeing all things. And take a, a very deep and cleansing breath. And rest your mind. Let it just flutter. Rest your mind and listen to your heart. And with each breath, be still and know. Be still and feel. You are the compassionate heart of God, of spirit. Your mind, your body, your heart works together as one. Together they are the I am that I am. And if you're starting to scroll back in time just because it felt right, just know that every choice along your path has brought you to today. The newness that you are who you are today. You have the power of your heart to change your patterns, change your auto responses, change your life. And remember that our today is filled with the promises of tomorrow. Today's choices make every yesterday a memory of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of love. Be still and know your compassionate heart is opening. Your light is shining. Your love is flowing. Your wounds, they're dissolving. And your peace radiates wherever you are, whoever you are with. For your soul is awakening to the compassionate heart that you are. Be still and know you are loved and you are beloved. 
Amen. Amen. And return yourself to the room. And move your shoulders about a little bit because, you know, I've been up here a while. And now, we're gonna, if you would join me in the offering blessing. And while we're doing the offering blessing, Randy's going to get himself all prepared to do music again. Offering blessing is in your bulletin. Oh, it's up there too. I just love that. I'm not used to that yet. <laughs> so breathing in, inhaling. Oh, okay. I um, and if you join with me, divine love through me, whoops, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, life. Amen. Here. Can you take it down? I forgot to ask about that one. Give you a little backstory, I think, to this. Um, I was thinking uh, uh, more about love than I really was about heart, but it all comes, you know, from the same place. And what uh, this song demonstrates so much of the mystery of love to me. Um, I think rather than tell you what it does for me, I'll just let it do it for you to you, for you. Um, this is in response to uh, Leonard Cohen wrote the song and um, it was in, in response to uh, some image that he was made aware of of the concentration camps uh, in Germany in World War II and uh, some, some inmate there who had a violin and had nothing left in life but that violin and that's what he gave to his his fellow uh, inmates I guess and um, and how in spite of all the darkness everywhere how how love was still a part of of, of the experience mystifying and uh, to me and beautiful <laughs> Dance me to your beauty like a burning violin. Dance me through the panic till I'm gathered safely in. Lift me like an olive branch, be my homeward dove. And dance me to the end of love. Dance me to the end of love. Let me see your beauty when the witnesses are gone. Let me feel you moving like they do in Babylon. Only show me slowly what I know the limits of. And dance me to the end of love. Dance me to the end of love. This is a spot where you can feel free to la 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 if you'd like. <laughs> I've never la 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 in public before. <laughs> la 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 la
Dance me to the wedding now, dance me on and on. Dance me very tenderly and dance me very long. Both of us beneath our love, both of us above. Dance me to the end of love. Dance me to the end of love. That was beautiful. Wow. Dance me to the end of love, which is eternity. Yeah. That is fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, God, for these gifts and tithes. All of those who give have, are receiving multiple pressed down and overflowing in their lives of time, talent, treasure, and all that is good. And Unity by the Sea accepts these gifts with the loving arms. And in all of that, I simply say thank you, God, for your prosperity and love. Amen. Thank you. Now, Michael does the most precious part of the service. Good morning. Uh, please join with me in reading our statement for peace. Unity stands for peace in the presence of conflict, for love in the presence of hatred, for forgiveness in the presence of injury. Unity honors the many names for God, the many paths to God, the many ways to worship God. For there is only one power and presence of God, and that God loves each one of us equally. It is therefore the position of unity to urge all nations, their leaders, and their people to turn to God by whatever the name for guidance during these challenging times and to pursue peace, not war, for this is what honors the God of all our faith traditions. Unity stands for peace in our lifetime. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. I will not be the part of the killing of any child, no matter how lofty the reason. Not my neighbor's child, not my child, not my enemy's child, not by bomb, not by bullet, not by looking the other way. I will be the power that is peace. Amen. So now we tend to go join our hands together in a little circle. Little circle. And yet it is so, can you just feel the place is so filled with love? I'm like, reading. it's like, cool. <laughs> Spirit of God, I'm well, good, I can read it this time. <laughs> good. I'll be there. I'll be there. My, my back's to it, so I'll be able to So first of all, we get to just have a moment of prayer. And if there's any person, place, thing that you want to add into the circle, you can say it out loud, you can say it to yourself, and we'll just take that moment of, knowing that these words and people that we place in the circle are filled with love. Michael Hill. Kelly Staten. For all of these beloveds and for all of the prayers placed in the ministry of prayer boxes, I lift them up knowing that their good is already working in and through them to will and to do them what is theirs to do and how they are to be. Fill with love and peace. Amen. Amen. Now we do that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's um, it's <laughs> See, I trusted you. I that one too. <laughs> <laughs> the peace song. <laughs>
God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Yay! Yay! Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Randy! Yes. Thank you, Randy! For making me cry. <laughs> 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 I don't know whether they'll have you or kick